Amazon is like a black history book. This is one of our most exciting Buddhist lectures because this is going to be one of these goodies because there are so many black people and black history on the Gohanzan, it is like a black history book. Now, Nichiren Shonen challenged all of the Mahayana Buddhist sects of his day by declaring in the Gosho. It's called the Drum Gates of Thunder. He writes, as no sutra surpasses the lotus, it is the one and only Mahayana Sutra. See, in Buddhism, only the Lotus Sutra is Mahayana Buddhism. In the Ghost Show, on attaining Buddhahood, it reads, quote, Nevertheless, even though you chant and believe in Myoho Renge Kyo, if you think the law is outside yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but an inferior teaching. Inferior teaching means those other than the Lotus Sutra, which are all expedient and provisional. Nitrin makes it clear that even though you chant and believe in your and Geko, if you think the law is outside of yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but an inferior teaching. And fear teachings means those other than the Lotus Sutra. Many of you practice Buddhism with the STI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu. Although you chant and believe in Myoho Renge Kyo, if you think the law is outside yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but in fear teachings. A lot of people get so hung up on Daisaki Keda or they get so hung up on the priests that they think that this is really Buddhism. Let's get into it. Now, there are two ways to look at the Gohanza. Now, for those of you who don't want to think about Buddhism or Nichiren Buddhism, we have a scroll that we chant to. And let's show it to you. The scroll is called a Gohanzan. This Gohanzan is our object of worship. And we chant Na Mu Myoho Renge Kyo to the scroll called the Gohanzan. Now, there are two ways of looking at the Gohanzan or the teachings of Nichiren Buddhism. There is the way that the STI Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu look upon the Gohanzan, and there is the way that we at the proud black Buddhists look upon the Gohanzan. You must understand that there are two types of Buddhism. See, there's Hindu Buddhism that, that the Nichiren Shu sets practice, that they practice the Hindu Buddhism. Now, the Hindu Buddhism is the Mahayana Buddhism. See, the Mahayana Buddhism is the time when Buddhism got separated by race, culture, and language. And many of the Japanese sects today, they practice the Hindu Buddhism of the Mahayana Buddhism that purposefully extricates all black history from the Buddhist teachings. So, when you begin to study about Buddhism, when you study Nichiren Buddhism, you must understand that the Nichiren sets purposefully extricate all black history from Buddhism. Now, let's kind of get into it. Let me give you an example. All humans, based on science, come from a single black mother in Africa. It doesn't matter who you are. Whites and Japanese can kick, scream, cuss, and deny signs, but all you have to do is take any white man, any Japanese man, any Chinese, any Aaron, or whatever you call yourself, and take a genetic sample, and you will find that human origin came from a single black mother in Africa, and everyone is of the African or black 
inheritance. Now, just as you can take signs like archaeology, anthropology, history, and literary science to prove what is right and truth, we can do the same with Buddhist teachings. Please understand the SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu all practice Brahman Nichiren Buddhism or Hindu Nichiren Buddhism that promotes Sanskrit and white Aryan superiority. See, they practice this Hindu Buddhism and what the Hindu Buddhism does, it takes away or extricates all black history. See, many of the people in the SGI and the uh, Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu, they are kind of like the Ben Carsons of Buddhism. They like being Dr. Ben Carson. They are very conservative and they are the kind of people who acquiesce to Japanese cultural domination. See, they have no problem with Japanese domination or they have no problem when white people take out black history and culture because it doesn't matter to them that one removes black culture and history because they are pretty passive people like Ben Carson. They get along uh, with white people and they acquiesce to white people and they subordinate themselves. But now we at the Proud Black Buddhists, we are people who believe in science, archaeology, anthropology, literary science, and you have to prove things up. Now, now, let's go into some history since this lecture is about um, there is so much black history on the Gohanzan that it's like a black history book. Now, this is what happened. In about 185 BC, there was a Brahmin general. His name was Push Mashitra. Now, there was a parade that was going on, and he was a Brahmin general. And this general went out and he killed the Mauryan king in broad daylight. Right in broad daylight, he's a Brahmin and he killed him. So when he's a general and when he killed the king, he became the king himself. And when Pushmasitra became the king in India, he was a Brahmin and the Brahmins hated the Buddhists because Brahmins and Buddhists, they have been going through fights since time. And so what he did was he got rid of all of the Buddhists by putting a bounty on the heads of Buddhists and what happened was the religion of Buddhism changed when the Brahmin king Pushmasitra killed the Miriam king. That was the last of the black Buddhist kings. Now, the Brahmins hated the Buddhists and they sentenced the Buddhists to a fate worse than death or slavery in America, they created what is called a chandela or an untouchable. Whenever your shadow even crosses, you cannot even walk on the shadow of a chandela. You might, they don't even want to see a chandela to look. If you having some food and you eat it and a chandela look at your food, you can't even eat it. They treated these people worse than you would treat an animal. Now, this was a chandela. Now, when you go to the SGI website, you will find that the SGI website loves Sanskrit so much that you will be thinking they're getting an orgasm on Sanskrit. Oh, it's always oh, Sanskrit. Oh, it's so beautiful because these guys get into Sanskrit. They love Sanskrit. They get off on Sanskrit. In fact, there's this Buddhist book. It's called Introduction to the Lotus Sutra by this Japanese. And I bought this Nichiren Shu book and this guy talking about some sacred Sanskrit. And I know the history and the culture and the racism associated with Sanskrit. But this guy's talking about some sacred Sanskrit. Now, when you hear about some sacred Sanskrit, 
Sacred Sanskrit is a buzzword like the white people use buzzwords for black people. They said we want to take America back. Well, hell, who got America? When you say take America back, they mean they want to take you as a black person and put you under a caste system or put you in a subordinate position. That's what they mean is we want to take America back. So you got buzzwords. So one of the Buddhist buzzwords is Sanskrit. Whenever you look at something and you see a Sanskrit meaning, that means they didn't took the black history out of it or they have kind of redefined it. Now, in on the Gohanzan, see there are different ways of looking at the Gohanzan. There are ways of looking at the Gohanzan the way Nitrin Shonen meant for it to be. And there's the Sanskrit interpretation. And most of the organizations like the SVI, Nitrin Shoshu, Nitrin Shu, they teach about the Gohanzan with the Sanskrit interpretation. That's why they make it white or why that's how you get the Japanese cultural imperialism. Now, when it comes to Nichiren Buddhism, the SCI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu all use the white or Sanskrit interpretations of Nichiren Buddhism. When you study the Gohan from these teachers, you'll be guaranteed not to find a single trace of black culture, history, and language. Now, when you study the Gohanzan or Nichiren Buddhism outside of the Japanese sets, you can include black history. Let, let us get into the black history of the Gohanzan. Now, let's give you a little history first. The founder of Magadha, where the Buddha was born, was born uh, he was a Naga. Now, the Naga were black people, and the founder of Magadha was a man by the name of C. Su Naga. The next black king who built up the empire was Nanda, was Bimbosara. Now, Bimbosara was the guy who supported, uh, the king who supported Shakyamuni Buddha. And then his son, that was Ajasutra, who had actually killed his father. But they were all black. His cousin Davadada was black because they all were Nagas. And after Bimbasara came, there was not Nanda, not, not Nanda. And then Nanda killed him. And then the Moriam king uh, killed Nanda. So you go from Nanda to the Moriam kings. And the greatest of the Muram kings was King Ahsoka. King Ahsoka was a Buddhist who tolerated uh, religion, uh, freedom of religion, and he sent uh, edicts all over the world. If you go and you can see all over the world, whether it was in Greece and whether it was in Iran and Iraq and all over Africa, he sent... Um, he placed etiquette to where he found peace with Buddhism. Now, just at the beginning of A.D., now, science proves what happened in India. It was a process called endogamy. Now, endogamy is meaning when you have selective breathing. This is the time in India's history when the Aryan or the Indo-Aryans got into power, when the Brahmins got into power, they invited the Indo-Aryans to come into India and they conquered them and they set up the worst inhumanity of man in human history. What they did was they put the Buddhist Nagas out of the caste. See, you had the uh, the Brahmins, who was number one, and then you had the uh, the Vasas and the Krasitras, who were the soldiers, and then you had the Sutras, who were the black people. The SGI, Nitrin Shoshu, and Nitrin Shu, Buddhist sects, all promote Hindu Buddhism. That means removing all black history from Nitrin teachings. Let us make one point 
crystal clear. Nichiren Shonen did not practice Hindu Buddhism nor believe in Sanskrit or Hindu Buddhism. In the Go Show, in the Go Show, Banishment to Sado, Nichiren Shonen says, quote, he says, Nichiren is the son of a Chandela family who lived near the sea in Tojo and Agua province in the remote country of the eastern part of Japan. Japan. The black history note, or this black history note, is that Nichiren identified with the Chandelas or the black people. It is the SGI and Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu that teach a different version of this. They try to take the word Chandela and twist it around. But we know that Nit what Nichiren meant because Nichiren identified with the black people because he said he was one family of black people. Now, in the ghost show, it's called Letter from Sardo. Now, this is what Nichiren writes. He says, the persecutions Nichiren has faced are the result of karma formed in previous lifetimes. The never disparaging chapter reads, quote, when its offenses have been wiped out, indicating that Bodhisattva never disparaging was vilified and beaten by countless slanderers of the correct teachings because of its past karma. How more, much more true is of Nitran who in this life was born poor and lowly to a Chandela family. In my heart I cherish some faith in the Lotus Sutra, but my body is outwardly human. It's fundamentally that of an animal. It was conceived of two fluids, one white, one red, of a father and mother who subsisted on fish and fowl. My spirit dwells in my body as the moon is reflected in muddy water or as gold is wrapped in a filthy bag. Since my heart believes in the Lotus Sutra, I do not fear even Brahma and Chakra. But my body is still that of an animal, with such disparity between my body and my mind, no wonder the foolish despise me. Without doubt, when compared to my body, my mind shines like the moon or like gold. Who knows what slander I may have committed in the past. Nitrin says, in the gold show, on his writing, he was born. He says, how much more true of Nitrin who in this life was born poor and loaded to a Chandela family. Whatever the case, the Chandela farmers were the black people of India. And it's clear that Nitrin identified with the Chandela. This is a part of black history or a teaching of black history that's different from that of the SGI, Nitrin Shoshu, Nitrin Shu. Now, if you are with these organizations, you are not going to, they are not going to acknowledge or be, or have Nitrin identified with the black Chandela family. Now, let's get into this history a little bit more. Now, on the Gohanzan, on the center of the Gohanzan, right here on the center, there is the word Namu. Now, Namu comes from the Pali chant Namu, which means devotion. The SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, and Nichiren Shu teach that Namu is a Sanskrit word. Namu is part of Haskip and Black language. Myoho Renge Kyo is translated from Paskip, the Black language, and not Sanskrit, the Aryan language. 
It is clear that Nitrin Shonen got his teachings of the Lotus Sutra from the translations from Kumajiva, who translated the Lotus Sutra from Paskit and not Sanskrit. When the Lotus Sutra was translated, it was the first it was first translated from Paskip to Chinese. And there is no record of any Sanskrit versions noted earlier than the Chinese translations. Your, you, your first history is the Lotus Sutra, Lotus Sutra, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, and this is the first part of black history. Namu, a Namo. And Milho Renge Kyo come from Pali, that is black history. Now, let's take it further. On the Gohanzan is Shaka Muni Buddha. Now, who told you earlier that he was a Naga? And, and Magadha started with the Naga king, Sinsu Naga. After him came Naga king Bimbasara then his son Ajashushra, and Nahanda, who was killed by Nanda, who was taken over by the Miriams, and you come on down to King Osoka and the Black Miriam King, King's rule until Pushmalitra killed the Raman, killed the Maran King. Now, on the Gohanzan is Shaka Muni Buddha, who was a Naga. That is your first lesson, which Shaka Muni Buddha is here. On the other side of him is many treasures Buddha. That's the second character on the right side. That's the many treasures Buddha. He's also black. Now, uh, on the go hunt, now let us go to the four corners of the Gohanza. Just write their names down. Now listen, I want you to know about, just write, okay, now go right here on the four corners. Right here, that's one, that's Bishamon. You go here, that's a God. You go there, that's a God, and that's a God. Now go look at the name, write all the names down. Now the God who we're going to pay particularly attention to in terms of black history is right here. That's Bishamon. Now Bishamon is called the black warrior or the northern god. Now the northern god is the god of wealth and he is called the black warrior. This right here is Buddhist teachings. Now I want you to see another illustration right here. You're going to see the five wisdom kings of the five gods. That's the four kings on the outside along with this God right here. Now to the right, this is a Bija character. This is the black God that Newton described in the Go Show as immovable. The God immovable is a Bija character. Now the STI, Newton Shoshu, Newton Shu teach that this character is a Sanskrit Sidium character. Sidium is a Sanskrit character, but in 29 BC, during the fourth Buddhist council, they wrote Buddhist teachings down. And when they wrote the Buddhist teachings down, there's a sutra called the Bija Sutra, which is a seed. You can look at this. This is not a no Sidium character. This is a seed. This looks like a sperm. There's two of them. One to the right is the God Immovable, and the one to the left is the God um, Craved Field. Now we're going to get into that, but what I want you to see most of all is that in Chinese other Buddhist sets, or in Japan, you're going to see the God Furumyo in the center, and you're going to see the four other gods on the outside. So you get to see a lot of Buddhist or black Buddhist history. Now, let's move to the left. Right here, the other city, that is the God called Craved Field. This is also a black God. Now, 
He's known in Japan as Azimyo, as you see Azimyo written, but this is also a black god. Now, as we come down to about right here, you're going to see the Naga God Raja. That's the Naga King. Naga King Raja. And then you're going to see the other Naga Gods right beside him. And these are also Nagas. The Naga means snake or Naga means dragon. And then when you come down here, you're going to see the Dragon King's daughter. The Dragon King's daughter was also the Naga girl. So as you look at this Gohanzan, you see so much black history. There is so much black history written on this Gohanzan that you can actually call this a black history book. The Japanese sets, the SGI, Nichin Shoshu and Nichin Shu will fail to tell black people about the Nagas because you got Naga Singa and you got the Naga. So whenever you hear the word Naga, you know this is black history because the Naga is the snake or the dragon. Also in black history, when you read about Nichiren Buddhism, uh, you read about uh, they were challenged by the Mongols. When you look at the Mongols, the Mongols were also black people. There is so much black history on the Gohanzan that you can write a black history book. Them suckers called Sanskrit sacred. We call Sanskrit racist. Shakyamuni did not speak it and tell them suckers they can keep it. Them suckers called Sanskrit sacred. We call Sanskrit racist. Them suckers called it Sanskrit. They are on a racist trip. The movie Shakyamuni did not speak it. Tell them suckers they can keep it. Them suckers on a racist trip. Them suckers called it Sanskrit. Sanskrit is the language of the Aaron nation. They don't believe in integration. It's just a rather to explain.